I grabbed one of my Flaviars. I got, I had two of these sitting back there, so I know these are from Flaviar. I put a little blue painter's tape on it so that I wouldn't see it. Um, they sent us a little sample of stuff to try once. It was neat. If you want to try little samples of something before you buy a big bottle, check out Flaviar. Can't go wrong. Riedel Cognac glass, the curve of it, the tulip shape, funnels things into your nose. And the way it meets the bottom part of my lip is epic. Some of you already know that. So I'm going to put, oh, hello, plastic stopper still on there. Boom, that wouldn't have gone too far. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We're going to save some of that for later. I will do a reveal, but we start off blind. Wow. So I got a sour note off the front of it, like a sour wine or grape. And then it moves into like a sweet taffy. Granulated sugar. Almost like a wine finish. Nancy Fraley, snip it just from the top. It's so light, I almost can't get anything from it. I'm going to hazard it. It's a... Uh, some kind of scotch. Huh. Wow. Whoa, that surprised me. It's got a smokiness to it. I'm bobbing my head because it's like a, a faint, faint light peat. But the smoke is more like a uh, waft of smoke from a fire. It doesn't have the peat strength. And I definitely didn't get it on the nose. And let me... No, I think I'm still good. Sorry, I think I'm getting a battery warning load here. We'll see if we lose this or not. Man, it doesn't foretell on the nose at all. That's odd. It's pleasant. Hmm. The faintness almost reminds me, and I don't think this is, I, I have a distant memory that there's not a talisker, but if I was going to say it would be like a faint talisker, just going to do it. That's three small little drops. I don't want to overly water this one down. Sometimes I will when I'm tasting. Water will sometimes open something up and let you get more out of it than you normally would. Hasn't really changed the nose. Sometimes when I'm tasting, and I know Scott's tasting, we'll overly dilute just to see what flavors we can puzzle out. It's not where I would sip the whiskey normally, but when I'm tasting it for review status, I'll, I'll bring her way low, ABV-wise. Mm. This is one I would sip neat. Again, I get a faint smoke. It's, it's not a strong smoke at all. Let's see what's underneath here. It's pleasant, though. I like it. It's a good sipper and something that if I had somebody that I was going to say, hey, you know what, we don't need to try an Ardbeg or a Lafroig Pete yet. But if you want a hint of the smoke, whatever this is, give it a shot. Try it. And if they'd sip this and said, yuck, I wouldn't go any further with a peated whiskey. If they were like, wow, that's a... It's a pleasant, warming, smoky feeling. Mm -hmm. You may, my friend, become a peat head. This is, huh, Nika Yoichi 10, it says 10 to Japanese whiskey. Huh. All right. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe I'll take a photo of it and throw it on there. So it's a Japanese whiskey, and I've never had... Nika, N-I-K-K-A, Yoichi, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, Y-O-I-C-H-I, and then right below it says 10, and then a capital 2, Japanese whiskey. It is 45% alcohol by volume, and it was bottled August 2015. 
Well, isn't that interesting? So this is exactly what I'm talking about. I got a Japanese whiskey in front of me. I didn't even remember that being in the sample. <sighs> this one was sealed. Sometimes I'll, I'll reuse these because I love the little the sample bottle size, but then I, I scratch off the label. and So this was sealed. I know that's what it is. A Japanese whiskey. Mm. Everything is smooth about it. Smooth smoke, smooth wheat, uh, sweetness. Uh, the ABV, even at 45, is, is very smooth and soft and velvety. Well, this is pleasant. It's, it's very hard to get a hold of Japanese whiskeys now. I had a Japanese uh, Yamasaki 12. I was lucky enough to grab an 18 when it was still extremely reasonable, still pricey. <clears throat> but this is nice. <clears throat> I would buy more of this if I could afford it or find it. I haven't seen it. I like the smoke. I'm a big smoke peat head, so anything with that smoke in there really intrigues me. What's tricky is I don't get it on the nose at all. Hmm. All right, so again, uh, just a quick game wrap up. I'm a huge game guy. I got a whole game channel, Bonding with Board Games, if you want to go look it up. Uh, what we've got on the table right here is a World War I game, but it uses a system from a game designer. When I say game designer, think author. Uh, they get known by their names, and they will sell just like you can. You know, King will sell books on his name alone. Richard Borg will still sell games on his name alone. This is a uh, very simple system. This one deals. This particular one, Command and Colors, deals with ancients. Uh, you got Rome versus Carthage and Syracuse. Fifteen epic battles. You're in command. Uh, you're you're basically you've got cards that'll be in your hand that allow you to. Uh, move troops, and the board's broken up into three different sides. Now, again, this is World War I, but it works the same. And here you may uh, have uh, heavy troops or uh, archers or mounted cavalry or an elephant. And this is a heavy, heavy game because it uses wooden blocks with stickers on it. You can see the uh, war elephant on the side here. Anytime you got a war elephant, the game's good. Just saying. That's enough on the games. If uh, if you're ever interested in some game stuff, switch over to my Bonding with Board Games channel. Um, I have two main hobbies, whiskey and cardboard. <laughs> cardboard being the board game. Scotch it, you scotch gods. And if you can find a Japanese whiskey named Nika Yoichi, give it a shot. It's good. See you guys.